Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a new discovery that may clarify about what happened to our own planet Earth a few billion years ago when it actually received an unusual guest known as Theia. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So, um, in one of the previous videos, actually in several previous videos, uh, from maybe a few months ago, um, I showed you and I explained to you how, once upon a time, the moon was created uh, from the collision with an object known as Theia. We believe Theia was actually a planet, uh, very similar in terms of mass and possibly even size uh, to Mars. Uh, so, if we were to place Mars right next to Earth here, it looked kind of something like this. And um, this object, when it collided with our planet, um, most likely created a large enough sort of dust cloud and um, basically a ring of debris that eventually solidified and became the moon that you see in the background right there. But in a very recent study, what we've discovered is that, well, it seems that maybe just maybe Theia was actually a lot more interesting than we used to believe. Uh, so first of all, how did all of this start? Well, on the surface of our planet, and actually I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of collisions going on right now, um, on the surface of our planet we have a lot of unusual things that normally don't really exist on surfaces. Like for example, there's a lot of nitrogen that doesn't really exist in many other uh, regions of the solar system, uh, at least on the surface. Uh, there's also a lot of things like calcium, there's a lot of um, sulfur, there's also quite a lot of carbon, and there are those collisions. Uh, all of these things like carbon, nitrogen, and sulfur normally basically sink to the bottom of the planet and essentially they usually end up at sort of the center or at least in closer to the center because they're much heavier and also um, for the most part they usually actually end up combining with things like um, iron uh, and nickel and create various uh, mixtures in the middle of the planet. So it's very rare to find things like, for example, sulfur on the surface. For some reason though, our planet seems to have a lot of that stuff on the surface and for the longest time we were able to explain this by saying that, well, maybe it's because um, for many, many billions of years, our planet has actually been receiving collisions from asteroids and here are some collisions we're going to start here. Um, and these collisions may have actually delivered all of this um, amount of nitrogen and um, carbon and of course sulfur. Okay, this Mars un unfortunately took away some of my collisions, but some of them did get delivered. Um, and so uh, this is how we thought uh, the Earth got nitrogen, sulfur and carbon on the surface. But then we looked at those asteroids that we normally refer to as carbonaceous chondrites uh, that have uh, this material. Basically, they do have a lot of sulfur, they have a lot of carbon, nitrogen inside, and they do fall on the, onto the planet and deliver this stuff. And we realized that the actual ratio of, of material, specifically the ratio of nitrogen to carbon, was way off. Uh, these things didn't really have the same ratio. So for every 20 molecules of carbon here, there's one molecule of nitrogen, but on our own planet Earth that you see in the back, um, the ratio is closer to about 40 to 1. So something was not really adding up. And also the sulfur was kind of more difficult to explain. And so um, what the scientists from Rice University in Texas did, and specifically the study was actually led by uh, Damanvir Grewal, um, they simulated a lot of conditions and specifically actually used re these really, really hot ovens with materials inside of them to try to see what happens to um, sulfur, carbon and nitrogen and also iron uh, when you reach conditions very similar to the conditions inside our planet. And they wanted to answer a simple question. So how did this stuff get to our planet? Uh, so basically uh, their assumption was that, well, maybe something else delivered these materials. And one of the first discoveries they did under high pressure and temperatures is that carbon doesn't really like to bond with iron um, when you get uh, really, really high pressures and temperatures and also you get nitrogen and sulfur there. Uh, on the other hand, we've also been discovering some unusual exoplanets out there, including planets that basically contain a lot of calcium inside, a lot of sulfur, and cores that are made of sulfur and um, calcium 
as opposed to uh, basically being made of iron and nickel. And uh, we've actually identified several of, those, of these planets already, but our solar system doesn't really have any. And so what we think may have happened here is something like this. So let's actually remove this Mars from here. We think that maybe, just maybe, when Earth was still young, um, the collision with Theia was a collision between an object that was um, very unusual and very likely contained a lot of sulfur in its core, and also a lot of nitrogen and a lot of uh, carbon pretty much all over uh, the surface and also inside. And the very large component of the core was probably um, also carbon and uh, nitrogen. And uh, on the other hand, our planet Earth back then may have actually looked like Mars today. So it may have actually not have a lot of sulfur, a lot of carbon and nitrogen on the surface. It was basically a rocky object with not a very rich surface. But when this collision occurred, all of this sulfur from the inside of the uh, Theia-like planet uh, got spread out all over the surface of Earth. So right here, this is when the core of Theia gets basically deposited onto the surface of our planet. And so the sulfur, uh, the uh, nitrogen, the carbon, everything else that we have on the surface today may have actually come from the core of Theia. And this explanation is actually um, very sound and very logical because there are a lot of things on, on the surface that we can't seem to explain. And if they were actually present in the core of Theia, um, along with the fact that it actually created moon afterwards, it may have also um, shaped the surface of the modern Earth. And so all of these materials that we have on the surface that later on created life, of course, because sulfur is absolutely necessary for life, as is nitrogen. Nitrogen is exceptionally important for life. Uh, all of these life uh, molecules, basically, were delivered by the collision with Theia. If it wasn't for that collision, none of the life on the planet Earth would possibly even exist today. And because Mars never really received a similar collision, at least not to this extent, maybe just maybe it never really had any life at all. At least that's the kind of an assumption that you can make from this particular study. Now, unfortunately, it's kind of difficult to really um, ascertain as to what really happened, but there is one possible solution to this problem. Um, after this collision, as you can see, some rocks were actually still kind of left orbiting around, well, not really our planet, but they probably left orbiting uh, the sun. Some of the asteroids that we have today, uh, most likely located in the same sort of region of space between Mars and Earth, may actually be the remains of that collision between Theia and um, Earth. And we think that there's maybe actually quite a few of them um, that are basically going to answer this question for us. They're going to answer the question of what Theia was, what early Earth was like, and most importantly, um, how all of this material was delivered to Earth. If one day we actually do discover an asteroid, and uh, some people speculate that it could even be um, an asteroid known as Psyche, that actually contains these materials that are very, very similar to Earth, but also very similar to the Moon, it would definitely give us a conclusive report on not only what the ancient Earth contained and what ancient um, Theia contained, but also answer the question of where all of these materials came from. But at the same time, we also may need to take a look at the neighbor of ours, the Moon, because the actual presence of uh, these materials on the Moon may also help us determine what really happened something like four-ish billion years ago, when the collision actually occurred. It was more like 4.4 billion years ago. But then you might ask yourself, so why is it even important? Why do we want to know all this stuff? Well, the biggest reason is that um, if we understand how this collision influenced the development of our planet Earth and how it actually may have potentially caused the planet Earth to develop life on the surface afterwards, we might be able to then create a model for um, habitable planets. We might actually start understanding what sort of planets out there in the galaxy might actually contain life on them. Because for all we know, if it wasn't for the collision, if it wasn't for the creation of the moon, and if it wasn't for the delivery of sulfur, nitrogen, and carbon onto the surface of our planet, we may have never actually had any carbon life here at all. So all of this is really important to understand because 
This is how we might be able to find alien life out there and also understand how we were created from uh, the beginning. But until we actually discover more asteroids and go back to the moon and study it a little bit more, we might not actually have these answers because as of now, it's still kind of a little bit too speculative. But on that note, I actually um, wanted to ask you guys, what do you think? Do you think that maybe just maybe if it wasn't for Theia, we wouldn't really exist? Do you think that planets actually do need to have this collision in order to kind of kickstart the life on the surface? Or do you think it may actually form in other ways? And if so, how? But keep this civil and scientific. On that note, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully now you know a little bit more about Theia, the collision, and how Earth may have been transformed and became habitable. But in one of the future videos, we'll explore this even more. So do subscribe if you still haven't. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out, and as always, bye-bye. And I would like to also thank all of the Patreon supporters of this channel because it actually helps me quite, quite a lot. Thank you for all your support, and I really love you guys. Space out.